Welcome. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing and component overview of Shadows of Brimstone, the City of the Ancients Revised Edition core box. So down at the table, see this core box is another large expansion or game for Flying Frog Productions. It's going to have a lot of contents in this game. It's for one to four players, ages 12 and up, and games are going to last from 90 to 180 minutes. So this game is a fast-paced, cooperative dungeon crawl board game set in the Old West and mixed with unspeakable horror. Each player creates a character, taking on the role of a classic Western hero archetype, such as a bandito, U.S. Marshal, gunslinger, or saloon girl. Forming a posse of heroes, the players take their characters down into the mines and the foothills surrounding the demonically overrun town of Brimstone. The heroes can embark on a variety of different missions, finding and sealing a gateway to another world, to rescuing a farmer's son who was hauled off in the night by a horrible creature. The heroes explore a dynamically generated mine, overcoming dangerous encounters and fighting savage creatures while collecting up useful gear and ancient artifacts to help them during their adventures. Heroes can even find portals to other worlds, stepping through to continue their adventure on the other side. Hero characters can be kept from game to game in a campaign system, earning experience and going up in levels to increase their skills and gain new abilities. The heroes can also visit local frontier towns between adventures, spending their hard-earned loot and resupplying for the next mission. So load up your six-shooter, throw on your hat and poncho, and gather the posse. The darkness is coming, and all hell is about to break loose in the shadows of Brimstone. And with the basics of the game, we'll go ahead and look inside. First, we're going to see if we have some work to do if we want to play this game. So I've got a lot of miniatures on spurs, so we're going to have to cut out and glue together. There is a good guide on how to put these together. Some are going to be just one piece. We need to cut it out, glue it straight to the base. Some come in multiple pieces. So it looks like we've got two there. Gunslinger's missing a head. Bandito's got options for arms. Tentacles, one piece. Strangler's one piece. Void spiders, no base at all. The night tear, looks like we've got a glue on his head, an arm, and a leg. And then the Goliath, just a few pieces there. Got some regular D6 dice in red and white. Then we have a D6, that's a peril die that just goes from three to six. And then we have a D8. Our Flying Frog Productions 2020 product catalog. Going over some of their different games, and they're a very thematic company. Of course, they have a ton of expansions for this game. We've got our adventure book, revised edition. 63 pages, so this is going to have some charts, upgrades, and the scenarios we'll be going on. Got a table of contents. Quick story of what's going on. A map. Then going over a mission. So we're going to have six basic missions and then six missions for the City of the Ancients. So it talks about how to set those up. In each of the missions, going to go over setup, our mission goal, special roles, objectives, reward, and failure conditions. And most are going to be a map system that'll get built as we play. Okay, but later on, there will be some fixed maps. You'll set up the map to start with. And then we have our XP and leveling up, how to create your hero posse level. Then going over our heroes. So in this edition, they've kind of taken the FAQ and worked it into the rule books. Then they've upgraded the characters to kind of balance them out. So we've got the U.S. Marshal, Saloon Girl, the Bandito, and the Gunslinger. And taking a look at their painted versions of contents of this. Enemy overview, talking about the other world. And then they've got a painting guide. And some charts, mutations, best part of this game. Then our revised edition rule book. 
Should be the same one as the other one. So everything we're gonna need to know to play. And we've got some charts and other things. Starting with an injury chart and madness because things are gonna go wrong. So we're gonna have to see how bad those things are. Chart for the frontier town. Then when we visit the saloon, we've got events and then things we can purchase. The general store. Going to church. The doc's office. Frontier outpost. And the blacksmith. And then our town itself with our locations for us to visit. On the back, some death event charts. And with Flying for All Games, they're going to give you some music to listen to while you play your game. Then we've got our hero and enemy cards. And these are going to be double-sided, whether you want to play the male version or female. So we've got the Gunslinger here. Along with the U.S. Marshal. Saloon Girl. and the Bandito. And for our enemies, we've got their normal side and brutal. So the Goliath, which will be our epic monster. And we've got some Night Terrors. Stranglers. Void Spiders. And tentacles. And lastly, target pylons. And a few stacks of cards we'll take a closer look at here in a bit. Then lift off our insert. We're gonna have some punch out boards. So we've got nine boards here for tokens and map tiles. You can see we've got our runes, sanity, different items, scavenge tokens. Look front and back. And these are going to punch out fairly easily. Pretty good cardboard. And we've got our depth track. And counter tokens, some grit, dark stone, corruption, and our entrance map tile. Look on the back here. Of course, it's entrance, whether we're going into the city of the ancients or into the mines, which is how all the map tiles are gonna be. Mines on one side, city of ancients on the other. Some larger ones there. more to look at. There we've got the gunslinger's bullets. And the last tile. So as you can see, there's a ton of tokens in this game. And our map pieces are just going to fit together like puzzle boards. Now onto our cards. We've got a side bag token, which is just for us to put our side bag tokens on. Let us know our limit is five. There is a way to upgrade it to seven. There are some rules reference to let us know what our tokens are doing. So if you want to know what bandages does, discard the hill D6 wounds. We've got our whiskey. Herbs, tonics, 
dynamite. Flip that over to see how it bounces. Then skill test icons, whether you're choosing one hero, all heroes, or you select a random hero and your diff different type of hit types. Side bag tokens, flash token, dark stones. What grit does for the gunslinger is dead eye shot tokens. His six shooter, ricochet shot, and void venom markers. Then for each of the heroes, there's three different paths we can choose. So looking at the gunslinger, you can go for a quick draw, pistol fanning, or reloading. The bandito, twin guns, explosives expert, and a swindler. The saloon girl, she's got a knockout punch, Acrobatic Dodge and Dirty Fighting. And lastly, the U.S. Marshal. Rolling Thunder, Harden Resolve, and Cleaning Up the West. Then starting gear we'll get, depending on which character you choose. Of course, someone's gonna have to be holding the light source. Got the Marshal's badge, the shotgun, Holdout pistol, just a regular pistol, several of those, and a dynamite satchel. Then our possible personal items. Hand mirror, and these are just going to adjust some of our stats. Pocket watch, cigarette, adventure boots, personal journal, locket, shackles, worn eye patch, ace of spades, and a weathered poncho. Then our scavenge cards, and these are going to be the same as in the other set. So there's potential to go scavenging and find stuff. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, and sometimes nothing. So we've got nothing here. Hideous Discoveries, Emerging Darkness, Chilling Dread, Something Shiny, a Useful Discovery, and then two small finds. And after defeating monsters, we'll get some loot. And these are the same as in the other set. Got some dark stone shards, something to come in handy. What's this? Some coins, cash, blood money, sack of gold dust, gold nuggets, gold bars, and a dark stone rock. Then we have some darkness cards. So these are going to be different events that come in play and are not going to be good for us. Growing Dread, another thing that's not going to be good for us. So it's going to come in with some flavor text and what it's going to do to us. So we've got Dread, Powerful Dread, A Fool's Errand, Void Surge, Stench Beyond Reason, and Cosmic Insignificance. And then a stack of gear we can potentially find as we go through the maps. So a lot of our tokens. Some matches, just different weapons we can use, better pistols, better rifles. So these are things we definitely want to be finding. Then we've got some artifacts that we might be finding in the mines. Some nice gloves, orbs, rings, different types of treasures. Then artifacts in the target plateau, frozen isopod, crystals, some different technology weapons. And of course, when you have to pick a random world, we've got some cards for doing that. Got a map deck for the mine, so when you have to Explore and get a different map tile. You'll use this deck and it's gonna show you what map tile to get. And if you're playing advanced mode, an encounter card to add along with it. And then those possible encounters, which are probably gonna have tests for you to do and a good event and a bad event. So 
So needless to say, you want to pass these tests. And just like the map deck for the mines, we've got the target plateau. Just going to help you randomize what tiles you get and put a encounter card with it. And encounter cards. Again, skill test, good ability and bad. And of course, we need monsters to fight. So we've got other world threats for the target plateau. Snow tears. Target pylons. And ancient spiders and a wandering enemy. And then depending on the number of players, we've got low threats for one to two heroes. For three to four heroes, medium threats, five to six, high threats. And then of course our epic monster fights. Our low threats, all these cards are just going to show you the number and type of monsters coming out. Your medium threats. Then our numbers are going to increase. High threats. And our epic threats. Get to see the Goliath. And additional threat cards coming out. And now some fun part. Got all the sprues set out. So step one with all this is cutting all the pieces out. So we're gonna need some additional tools. As this will tell you, we're gonna need some clippers and they say plastic cement. I've got the clippers here. But I've been using Gorilla Super Glue and that has been working good for me so far. So if you've never done this before, basically this just takes some time. You're using the snips, trying to get as close in the sprue as you can, and you're just going to go around the miniature to get everything out. And then depending on how close you got, you can go back in, scrape it. Some people use an X-Acto knife. So that's what I'm gonna be doing for the next few minutes, cutting all these out. So I started cutting in, and I just wanna bring something to your attention here. Let me get that out of the background. When you are cutting, you do want to make sure you're not cutting off things that are meant to help you glue it in. So like for this leg here, so you've got a diamond shape there to help us glue on another thing. So we want to make sure we don't cut that piece off and cut it off where the spur actually is. That's just something, if you're new to this, you do want to take a look at how things fit together and not cut off the edges that are meant to help glue things in. So here's our first group of miniatures. Some are just easy. All we needed to do was cut them off the spur and our spiders are ready to go. The next easiest is gonna be the tentacles. So we'll just start with one of those. Basically all we need to do is add some glue on here, hold it on there. And typically when I hold it on there, I count to 15 or 20 or something. So I've got my glue here. We're just gonna dab some on the bottom of this. And I'm going to edit out me holding it here and counting the 15 to 20. But honestly, I can already feel that it's taken. So there it is. Nice, easy, and done. And since that was so easy to do, we'll get this second one done. Position it on there. Like I said, typically I'll hold it 15 to 20 seconds, maybe sometimes more, but with something like this, it doesn't take long for it to stick. So tentacles done, those done. Uh, usually I space these, so this has different pieces, so we need to glue his head on, then I'll glue his leg on and let that sit for a little bit, then go with his arm and then glue him on the base. So as you can see, when you're cutting these out, you wanna make sure you don't snap that off or else his leg's gonna be a little bit harder to position on there. So we'll go ahead and just add some glue to his hip joint. And 
And then press that on there. And this I will hold a little bit longer. And we'll see if that held. And we'll glue his head on. I'll just put it on his body. Making sure not to grab his leg. And stick his head on there. And we'll let that sit. We'll go over to our stranglers, which are one pieces. Just need to glue the bottom of the feet. Try to get him positioned centered on his base. And after about 15 seconds, we'll let go and let him finish <laughs> gluing. Then we'll go back to this guy doing his arm. Try not to touch anything else I've already done. And hold that in place. Then we'll go for his feet and put him on his base. Positioned off. Then we'll do this two more times and be done with the smaller monsters. And now on to our heroes. I'm going to start with the Bandito. I'm going to go with the dual pistols because on the original model I already have one with a pistol and dynamite, so I'll make him have two pistols. So we'll go ahead and glue up his shoulder. And this is the hard part here where I can do this without gluing my fingers to it. All right, we'll let him mold a little bit. Then we've got our Marshall, so he needs a little dab on his hand, and we'll stick his chest and arm in there. And maybe I should have made this disclaimer earlier. I'm not but one would say an expert or professional at this. I just want to get these table ready. Learning these basics will definitely get you started. Then our gunslinger just needs his head put on. So a little glue on his neck and trying to hold it in the right spot. All right. His head stays on, so the saloon girl, she just needs to go to her base. So get her feet on there, try to get her centered. Let's see if she stands up on her own. Then we have to put his hat on him. And that is not a problem. And so it's just putting these on the bases. He's good. And 
and he can stand up on his own. So just the bandito. All right, we'll let those dry and move on to the Goliath. And, and now to finish up with the Goliath. So we're putting his leg on, then putting his head together, put his arms on, his nasty old tongue, then connect to the bases. The headpiece looks fairly simple. Put some glue on the pegs. Get some around the edges. And connect and hold. Then for his leg. Put that in there. Now we've got a Stick his head in that hole there. Then we'll give him some arms or tentacles in his case. His other one, trying to be careful where it's safe to go without getting glue on me. Then I'm just going to go ahead and put him on his textured base there. And we'll get his tongue put together. And while that glues, might as well go ahead and put the base on. Once I get my thumb off. And now his mouthpiece. And there he is. And with everything finished up, we've got the Goliath here. Give him a spin around. Then we've got our three night tears. And a whole bunch of void spiders. Our stranglers. And tentacles.
Then the Marshall. Our saloon girl. Gunslinger. And lastly, the Bandito. And that's everything in the revised edition of Shadows of Brimstone City of Angels. As always, I hope you enjoyed this unboxing, so please click on the like button below and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching.